a little bit later you're going to sing. You want to sing a song? Yeah. Brought the guitar. And it, it, I don't, we don't want to curse this by saying we all fell in love with what you were doing. Yeah, we had earlier. to stop everything we were doing no, for your soundtrack. No check. pressure. But, oh, okay. okay. No, Once live, we'll see this. what happens. Try to repeat it. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, the reason you're here this morning, a couple of reasons, yeah. but you have written and directed a play. Yes. You will do for the actors. Uh, Gang, gang yes. over there at the train station. At the uh, Ivy Substation yeah. at, uh, <laughs> in Culver City. Yeah, okay. Where the Munchkins landed. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and and you, this is this, you know this has been your passion. You've, been, you've had this for years and years and years. Thirty-four years now. Actors really? Gang, yeah. Wow. Uh, right out of UCLA, uh, a group of us formed this theater company. Just a bunch of punks. Just a punk rockers that <laughs> wanted to make good theater. Yeah. And so you've you, been doing your it a long success time. has allowed you to have this. Well, actually, I would argue that my success came from this, that every time I would do a, like a uh, episodic or a sitcom back in the, when I was starting, I would always tell my agents, I need four or five months to do some theater. And they would say, you're crazy, you're yeah. building momentum. And I would say, no, I think this is what's important. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was actually prioritizing that that led to the opportunities that came. Now, now that was art first, but in this business, that usually is suicide. Yeah. yeah. So, so you got away with it. You stayed yeah. true to it, though. <laughs> well, it was the way I was raised, and so I wasn't going to change that. You're we, so talented. Can we talk about Rick? the way you In were so raised? In so many different areas. Yeah, I want to talk about the way you were raised. Uh, your mom and dad. Your dad was in the middle of the perhaps greatest period of folk singing in America. In New York. Yeah. Ran the gaslight. Where Did you go to the gaslight? Mm -hmm. So you heard every person of importance. I heard some amazing things. Uh, singers, uh, I heard Dave Van Ronk, I heard Sonny Terry, Brownie McGee, I heard Cat Stevens when he was starting out. I, I, I was really lucky, I was really fortunate. I was always a fly on the wall there, but uh, I observed some amazing um, singers. And, and you can hear that in oh, your, oh, absolutely. very folky, yes. and obviously it's in your blood. It is, it is, and so what we're doing at the Actors Gang is the first Saturday of every month we're doing a music series. Oh. And so um, this month, we've, uh, I've asked a, a friend, Eric Gorfain, to uh, curate a night, and it's going to be uh, myself singing, uh, Petra Hayden and David uh, Garza, who are, are all friends of his, and, uh, but he's an amazing violinist and uh, has a quartet called the Section Quartet. The section, so, yes. so we'll be having some strings and songs. This is not the Rogues game. Gallery. No, no, this is a different That's thing. That's your this is band. Actors Gang Music Series, uh, okay. one night only, Saturday night at and 9 And Eric's going to be performing with you coming up. I want to just get back to your dad for one more moment. Yeah. Your dad was in the Highwaymen, the first Highway, the real Highwaymen, yeah. the, the folk group, not the Willie Nelson Highwaymen, because right. that was a lawsuit, as, as I recall. <laughs> well, actually, it was a lawsuit, but it was settled by the, the, the original Highwaymen uh, opening for the Highwaymen. Is that <laughs> right? Is that what they did? <laughs> Yeah. The original yeah. Highwaymen yeah. opened for the for the, for the Willie Nelson. So yeah. it was water yeah. under the bridge at that point. Yeah, I don't think it was about money. It was just about. Yeah. Well, yeah. Will, it was Willie Nelson and Chris Christopherson and Johnny Cash and and Waylon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they opened for them. Your dad joined the hi Highwaymen. He was with them for many many years. The original. Highwaymen. He was, and actually he was he went he went to UCLA and was a music major there and was. Um, quite proficient in, um, in arranging music and composing. And so he was a little older than those, the, the guys in the Highwaymen, so they hired him after they had their first album, to basically to get them in shape for, uh, you know. For being real. For being real yeah. and for sus sustaining a career. Yeah, because they were college kids and they recorded Michael, Row Your Boat Ashore, that right. was the number one. Huge then you hit. Had to, then you had to deliver after that. Yeah, and then, so what, the best way to see what uh, my dad did was is there's a live concert uh, from MIT in 1963 that is so impeccable so the musicianship is is extraordinary and you know back in that those days they used to sing around one mic it was all mono sure. so they would uh, position themselves and uh, five guys around the mic yeah. and um, if you see if you hear this concert it's just flawless it's the arrangements are beautiful the harmonies are, are gorgeous it's just it's really remarkable and, and the big test when you all get when they all gathered around the mic was where do you stick the guitars without killing each without other? Without killing each yeah, other, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'd have, you, some of them had to play like this, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> so you love music so much, clearly. Theater, you adore. I mean, do you have a first love? Wh which one, which I'd one say, is it? I'd say, well, it's hard to choose between the two, but um, I, I keep coming back to theater. And, uh, and uh, the, one, the play I've just written, I'm really excited about. Uh, we're playing it Thursday through Saturday nights at the Actors Gang. And, 
It's a, a it's a, a extension. We did a, a quite successful production of Midsummer Night's Dream that we've been traveling all around the world from mm -hmm. China to Italy I to think South that's America. That's the last time we saw you. Yeah. Yes. We were talking about that. Yes, and so that's been pl we've been doing that for about three years now, and so this is our new project with the same cast of incredibly talented actors, and so we're doing this original piece called Harlequino Onto Freedom, which mm. is about slavery and. Uh, um, about what freedom means to people and what it is to entertain, what is funny. But what's you, funny and what's free. What's funny and what's wow. free. And you're using the Commedia dell'arte style to do all of this. Yes, and we're using these incredible masks made by this true art artist uh, called Erhard Steifel who works in Paris and is recognized by the French government as one of the special artists of, you know, you know how the French government does that thing. Wow. Yeah, they give you a special That's honor. Great. And make you a knight or something. Well, and I must say, for us lowbrow folk, we love your movies also. Well, I think oh, what I do movies. in theater is pretty lowbrow too. I, I, there's, a, there's, um, I, I don't know how to say this on the air, but I did, I wrote one scene that has uh, about 25 Swears. jokes about oh. on one page. So that's do pretty that. lowbrow. I don't think you get more lowbrow so than that. I'll it. Yes, you'll oh, love it. Hey, <laughs> don't let the, the, com the Comedia dell'arte throw you. It's funny you in any language. Like it's, yeah. Well, Comedia dell'arte traditionally was pretty raunchy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, With it's all Italian. kinds of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where do you think the phrase codpiece comes from? Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, Harlequino. Kino? Kino. Harlequino. All right. At the Actors uh, Gang at the Ivy Substation, Culver City, you know you pass it all the time there mm -hmm. uh, on October 31st. We're going to take a break. Till uh, October 31st. There's more. Yeah, till. Because we get the performance now. Yeah. The good stuff. We much talked Robin. about performance. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to dedicate the song to Maria, who had a dream about it. Maria <laughs> yes. yes.